Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about building your confidence as a medical coding student. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue. I'm a medical coder. Okay, guys. So, uh, this is going to be some straight talk today. You know why? Because I've been getting some of these messages from y'all that are just, it's, it's one of the hardest things about being a YouTube content creator for medical coding and, and working with lots of adults that are going back to school is when I see self-defeating behaviors immediately, not even giving themselves a chance, just immediately self-defeat. It fires me up because I don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing it. It, it, it really frustrates me because I know that there's people with lots of potential, but because they have this block, they immediately want to count themselves out. And I don't like that. So I'm going to read a comment. And I also want to say this, guys. I am very clear and specific when I when I talk to you guys about the reasons that I, I suggest things the way that I suggest things. I tell you guys all the time, you know, the slow way is the fast way. If you learn the building blocks and if you learn it right, then you'll be faster in the long run. And I always discourage like going through like these fast paced medical coding programs that are like 16 weeks and you can learn this new career field in just 16 weeks and you can be on your way to a brand new career. And I tell y'all, y'all need more time. And then some people take that as like a challenge, like I'm challenging them and that I'm, I'm thinking down on their knowledge and I'm not. I'm telling you as somebody who's been there, <laughs> what it's like, what, what you should be prepared for. Because at the end of the day, I don't have a dog in the fight, whether you get into medical coding or not, you are the only one with that on your journey, right? Because I'm already a medical coder, but I want to see medical coders that are coming in that are going to be prepared. I see a lot of people that are not prepared and the steps to be prepared are so easy. It is so easy, but there's a lot of that resistance right away. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The viewer says, so do you recommend just flipping through the pages of the chapter and reading all of the guidelines? I've been reading everything and everything is in big letters. And so far I've just finished the digestive system. I know for path and slash lab and medicine, there's no way I can read everything. Does your ability to read stop when you get to those two? No, it doesn't. What it is, is a lot. And I've said it before that if it's going to take you a few days to go through those two sections in CPT, um, uh, because it's, they're bigger sections uh, there's, it covers many, many things, those two sections in particular. But the reason that I say, and I'm going to say this very, again, very clearly, the reason that I say to go through each one of the pages, I have said many times, you don't have to read everything. But I do recommend reading the tips along the way in the CPT book because that's going to familiarize you with the book. There's a lot of people that take these exams and they freak out when they get into the testing room and they say, oh, it's because I have test anxiety. No, you're freaking out because you didn't put in enough time to study or you're not familiar like you should be with the book. Now, it's either one of those two things. Now, guys. People can pass these things because they do it all the time, but it's a matter of accepting, okay, this is the way to go. This is the path to go instead of resisting. I said it very clearly in that video that the reason that I suggest that is so you can get familiar with the book, that you don't have to read everything, but you do have to at least know where everything is at and just look at the pages. This person has taken it upon themselves to read everything in the digestive system section. Great, good for you, but there's a ton of other sections that you have to go through. And getting yourself familiar with the CPT book is best because when you're in these exams, these are timed exams that if you're with AAPC, it's two minutes, 40 seconds per question. With AHIMA, it is roughly two minutes per question. So you have to know these books forward and backwards and you have to be comfortable with them, which is why I'm telling you all, to go through the book and look at it. So that way you can know where everything is at right away. You don't need silly tabs. You don't need to write, you don't need to highlight or do any of these things because these books are written by doctors and scholars that know what they're doing. You have to learn to use the book. That's all you have to do. 
And when you think about it, you're, you're going over many, many chapters in the CPT book, many chapters. And then to get to a oh, lab and, and the medicine section, you just can't possibly do that. I think is a load of garbage because again, as I said, you can break it up into sections so that way you don't do so much at a certain time. And not only that, I always tell you guys to study for 30 minutes or one hour at a time, period. Once you get to 30 minutes or one hour, however long you're gonna study, then you take a break. And then 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you want, and then you go back to studying again. Because that's the way to do it. If you were to sit there for hours and hours on end, there's a good chance a lot of that stuff's not gonna sink in to your brain. There's a very small percentage of the population, sure, that can do that. But for the vast majority of adults that are going back to school, that's not the case. So I'm trying to make it easier for you guys by telling you these are the secrets that I've had to go through that I learned so that way I can pass it on to you. But this instant resistance to everything has to stop. Because it's very frustrating to see, number one. Number two, you're telling yourself, I can't do this. I can't do X, Y, Z. Why not? Where is it written that you can't do X, Y, Z? Where is it written that you can't make extra time to learn and understand the things that you're doing? Now, for those of you that have gotten into these fast-paced medical coding programs and you're saying, oh my gosh, I have to learn all of these things. The program that you're going through Go through it, finish it, get all the material you can from them so that way you can pace yourself to study later on. Now, if the test is included with that program and you have your um, choice of whenever you take that, that test, maybe you have a voucher that's good for a year, you do not have to take it at the end of those 16 weeks. What you can do is supplement your studies with the independent study video that I have it's in the description box of all the videos that I have. <laughs> Every last one of them has the link to that specific video. And in that video, it has the syllabus. Okay, that's how you find it. You look in the description box. Description box has the independent study video. You click on that link and it's a YouTube video. And then it has all the syllabus. You can supplement the things that you did not learn in that fast paced medical coding program and tack on another five months or tack on another six months. So that way it's, instead of four, uh, four months that you've been studying, it comes out to a total of 10 months. And then at the end of those 10 months or 12 months, then you can go and take your test and then you'll be prepared for it. And you will have, you know, gotten to your goal by going through and studying on your own, guys. It is possible to do that. And if you say, well, Blue, I, I'm doing this because I really need a job bad, but I can't afford the test. The test is a part of what we have to have in order to be noticed by these employers. I will say that there are some medical coders that do not have medical coding certifications yet, but they, when they go in and, and they apply, maybe they know somebody or maybe they just have a really good resume and they're able to get in and they say, okay, well, you have six months or 12 months to be able to get your certification to, to keep your job. And so that's how they're able to do that and get in. But those people also test very well with the employer as far as like the, um, the testing that they do for them to assess their skills. Every place is different. It's not the same for every place. Everybody asks me all the time, well, what questions do they ask? I've been asked several different questions <laughs> by the companies that I've applied for. And as far as like their testing was set up differently, um, when I worked for Level 1 Charma Hospital, they gave me 25 cases to code, 25 cases. And then I had to answer another 50 questions about HIPAA, medical terminology, anatomy, uh, pathophysiology, pharmac pharma, you know, <laughs> uh, so they asked me all those different questions and that was unusual because when I applied here for my forever home, I, I had some of those, like some, some anatomy questions, but I had also a lot of questions specifically on the guidelines and specifically on the CPT book. And they asked me about modifiers and things like that. So there's, it's just varied. I mean, there's no way to really prepare for it. And the only way I say to prepare for it is by still practicing with your workbooks, you know, working through those workbooks 
is very important. I have always recommended the CPC study guide. I've always recommended the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers by Nelly Leon Chisen. That link, those links are in the description box below. And um, if you are using that ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers to study for just the diagnosis coding, you can certainly skip the ICD-10-PCS portion. You will know that it is an ICD-10 PCS question because of the way that it's worded. And of course, the answers are right there that you can cover up and, you know, you can move along to the next question that has ICD-10 CM on it. So that's what you can do for that. But to make sure that you are keeping yourself motivated throughout this process, because this, this, isn't, this isn't a sprint, guys. Learning this is not a sprint. You need nine months, 12 months, or 18 months. That's what I say, okay? And I say this because, you know, these fast-paced medical coding programs, they try to get you to pass a test. That's what they're teaching you is to pass tests. But when you're out in the real world trying to find a job and all of a sudden you come into, well, everybody wants experience. And even though I tell you all to apply anyway, y'all still resist me. <laughs> apply anyway because it's free. Um, they all want experience and then when I take the test, they say, oh, we're going to go with another candidate. That's because you probably failed the test. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. That's why I'm telling you, right? To take the time to learn nine months, 12 months or 18 months. So that way you can be prepared going out there in the real world. Because at the end of the day, when you're looking at these charts, these charts are going to be somebody's record, right? And it could be, um, anybody that is is going through you know an illness or anything like that and it's it's very difficult as it is it's very expensive and then for you to go in and just select whatever because you don't really understand or this is what the doctor says they wanted so you think it's okay to push it through no it's not you have to make sure that it is correct because the patients deserve to have um codes that are selected that are appropriate the provider deserves to have all of the credit that they did for that patient taking care of that patient they deserve all of that credit and it's not right when people just don't care or they think that it's okay to be just like oh i'm just here to collect a check and go home you know that's not right it takes a lot of brain power to do what we do and it is possible you just have to be disciplined and you have to stop saying those ridiculous words of oh no i just can't do that and there was another one, I forget, um, it was about learning medical terminology. She says, oh, I don't think I'm going to pass medical terminology and anatomy. You, you're not even in the program yet, and you are already just counting yourself out for not knowing medical terminology and anatomy. That's why you study. That's why you study, so that you can learn medical terminology and anatomy. There's no excuse to not learn it, especially when there are plenty of channels on YouTube, they break it down so wonderfully, like um, Crash Course. Crash Course is an amazing channel. Um, they talk about anatomy and medical terminology and all those things. Crash Course is a wonderful channel. <laughs> uh, so you can learn a lot just by going through there and then looking and looking at the pictures and, and looking at all the things that they have there. You can do that. It's not impossible. But people have, it's, I don't know if it's just because it's easier to have a defeated attitude that I think that maybe that's why some people do it or they're spending time in these ridiculous Facebook medical coding groups that people act like they know and they don't know and then they're giving out this terrible advice or it's the people that are in the groups that are complaining and people are just sort of absorbing that energy and that's you know what leads them to be fearful or you know worried or you know things like that guys you don't have to do that you can Get yourself out of that um, environment. You don't have to follow those groups. You don't have to sit there and listen to that nonsense because that's exactly what it is. There are no shortcuts to learning medical coding. You have to do the work. You have to show up. You have to be there even the times when you don't feel like it. You have to be there and you have to make it a point, make it a plan and you know, keep going with it. Because the second you tell me, oh, I don't think I can do that on my channel, you get blocked. Why? Because I can't say anything to you that's going to be of any substance because you already have it in your mind that you're going to give up 
or that you have this negative attitude of, well, I don't think I can, or I can't. Yes, you can. There is nothing stated anywhere that so-and-so cannot do X, Y, Z. You know what I do when somebody tells me that I can't do something? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? And I've had plenty of people tell me, Blue, I underestimated you. People underestimate me a lot. Do you think I care? No, because I know that I can do anything. And that's why I hope to pass along to you guys that with hard work and dedication to learning and dedication to practicing and um, asking those questions and learning to do your research and keeping yourself isolated from negative energies like these Facebook groups that really have no purpose other than to scare people or for people to commiserate in, right? And to stay away from those because this time right now is a time for you to be learning. This is a time for you to be excited because this is something that is different. And when you get done with this and you go into that exam room and you're ready to take that test, there is no better feeling than that, than walking in and being confident and ready to take this test and be like, you know what, I've got this. And then when you walk out with that certification or if you had to wait a few days with AAPC, <laughs> uh, you wait a few days and then you find out that you passed and then you're on your way. To the, you, that, you got over that part and then you're on your way to finding your first job. But if you're in school right now, you don't need to worry about looking for a job in medical coding. Not at the moment. Don't worry about that right now. What you need to focus on is the here and now and the the books and the study and getting those 20 hours in that three and a half hours per day and then the two and a half hours on the weekend that's what you need to focus on because if you start getting too far ahead thinking of all these other things that you don't need to think about right now it can stop you from being focused on what you do need which is to learn the coding and to learn the fundamental basics which is the medical terminology anatomy patho pharma, all of those things. And eat, all of these things can be incorporated in slowly. And the more that you expose your mind and your brain to these things in medical, <laughs> the, the, the more you're going to be able to understand it quicker. Okay. You're going to be able to understand. You're going to be able to say, okay, now I can learn to speak this language. It is speaking a new language. <laughs> Absolutely. It is speaking a new language. But again, like I say, if you're going to sit there and be down on yourself and, oh, I can't do it or I can't find a job or I'm worried about finding a job. I haven't taken my test, but I'm worried about finding it. You're, you're wasting time. You're wasting time and you're procrastinating on what you should be doing, which is studying. That should be your main focus. You have all the energy and the time to worry about stuff that you don't need to worry about right now. You can be studying these books. And what do I mean by study the books? Guys, I have said many times, open your books to look at them. So that way you can familiarize yourself and you don't need the tabs. Then you're going to work on the workbooks for all the ones that I recommend. They're in the description box below. You can even, um, if you have the ICD-10-CM um, expert for physicians from Optum, at the beginning of every chapter, it has the guidelines for that particular chapter. And then it has questions, answers, and rationale as to like different scenarios for codes that pertain to that particular chapter. And when you read those and you cover those up and you practice and you look those up, that's going to make you more confident. If you're sitting for the CCA or the CCS or the CIC and you have the Optum book from, um, uh, for ICD-10 PCS in the back in Appendix M, like in Mary, there's a, a list of um, procedures, I was going to say questions, a list of procedures, 388 of them, I believe it is. And then they have the quiz in the front and then they have the, um, the answers in the next section of that section M. So they broke it into two parts and it gives you the rationale for some of them, but that's going to be how you learn the PCS book. That's what I did. I went through all of those so that way I could practice because I don't have hands-on um, inpatient coding experience, but being a veteran coder for 13 years at the time, <laughs> I was like, I have to pass this test. 
And that was the only way I was able to get myself confident was by going through the ICD-10 PCS book and then going through that um, Nelly Leon Chisholm book, the ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS coding handbook with the answers. And working through those is what helped me to be confident. The day of my test, the CCSP, it wasn't a big deal. I mean, I was already ready for that because that's I've been in the outpatient side for many years. So I was okay to go in and, and be confident to take that. Uh, when I took the CCS, I knew that I had been studying. I knew I had been studying. But I also, you it's just a natural human response to like, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> But then I was just like, no, I got this. So that's a, that was what I was thinking the whole time was, I got this. And I, I know I was nervous going into the CCS exam because, of course, it was going to have a new thing on there that, I mean, I had only seen in books. And when I went in there, I left my keys on the check-in desk. And I realized I left my, my keys on the check-in desk when I was sitting in my seat. And so for me... I would have had to go leave the desk, uh, have them come collect me, leave the desk, and then go find my keys. But then you know what I said to myself? I said, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> she's insured. She'll be okay, you know? And so I said, if anything happens, I will uh, call a taxi to come take me home <laughs> or call a friend because I was just like, I'm not going to worry about that. My focus needs to be on this exam. And you know what? I passed it. I passed it with, uh, I had eight minutes left on the clock. So that's how these tests go. And you don't realize it at the time when you are taking the test, how emotional it is and how the adrenaline is just pumping until you leave your test. And then you are like, oh, you know, and then you feel it. <laughs> After you leave that test room, you feel everything. Um, you feel that you're tired and you're hungry and, you know, you're ready to either celebrate or whatever. And in my case, I was ready to celebrate because I passed, you know, but it does take a toll on you guys. You, you have to know that. And it's a normal part of it. It's normal to be overwhelmed. But at the same time, you have to learn to regulate your emotions and how you feel and how you handle your emotions. Because emotions can control people so much so that they don't get out of bed, they don't study, they get lazy, and they're just like, oh, I'll just give it up. But you know, in the back of your mind, if this was for you, it will find its way back to you until you complete it, okay? So just make sure that you don't let your emotions um, take control of you being able to do this. Whether you're tired or not, you got to show up and you got to study. And if, if you don't want to look up codes that day, then just look at your books because your brain is taking all of that in and it's going to prepare you for success. But again, you just have to show up. And for those of you that don't show up, well, you know, uh, then I hope for the best for you. I hope you find another profession that you can study um, that is easier for you. Uh, but I mean, I don't know the rewards of other <laughs> other professions. I know the rewards of this profession. I know all of the wonderful things that it has given me, the comfortable life that I have because of it, the wonderful people that I have met and that I get to work with every single day uh, because I do what I do. And then being on this channel and then having having this platform to be able to speak to all of you and be able to motivate some of you <laughs> who write to me and tell me, uh, Blue, thank you because I got my certification because of you. Uh, Blue, I used your, your self-study and I was able to pass because of you, because you helped me and because I heard your voice in my head say, <laughs> say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And absolutely you can. Absolutely can. I'll say it all day long because at the end of the day, that's truly what I do believe. When people really want something, they'll go after it. But if it's not really what you want, you'll make every excuse in the world to, to not do it. But, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, but anyway, that's my message, guys. Let's be more positive with what we are capable of, okay? Yes, you can. And don't ever tell me, oh, I can't because it's, it's the pathology section or it's the medicine section and I cannot possibly. Yes, you can. Absolutely. 
So if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all next time. Bye.